Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to calculate load history deflections and perform deflection checks in RAM concept. In this particular video, we're going to be focusing on the load history calculation options. Now this step should be taken before performing a load history calculation. To access the calculation options, we're going to go to the criteria menu and then select calculation options. Now you can see the calculation options dialog has three separate tabs and we're going to be focusing our attention on the load history ECR tab and we're going to specify our load history calculations for this particular model. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select our creep or shrinkage model. For this particular series of videos, we are going to be focusing on the ACI 209.2R08. So I'm going to go ahead and select that parameter. Now after specifying your creep or shrinkage model, you're then going to focus on your general parameters. And let's go ahead and discuss some of those options now. The first thing we're going to take a look at is our initial load application. Now this would represent the time when loads are first applied to the structure and becomes the start time of the first load history step. The input initial loading time should be based on the construction and shoring schedule of your specific project. Now RAM concept will use the input initial load application to calculate the adjustment factors for creep depending upon the creep or shrinkage model that you specified. For this particular structure, we've gone ahead and coordinated our initial load application as three days, which is when we're expecting the shoring to be removed. The next variable we're going to take a look at is the cure duration. Now this represents a time when the moist cure period ends and when the shrinkage period begins. For this particular model, we're going to select seven days in that field. The next variable is the aging coefficient. This is used to adjust the creep strains to account for the rate of load application and the variation of concrete strength over time. The program will then use the resulting modified creep strain in the cross-section strain compatibility calculations. Now the final general parameter we're going to take a look at is our external shrinkage restraint. This is used to account for cracking due to the gradual buildup of tensile stresses that occur when stiff supports restrain shrinkage movements. To define this variable, you can enter a specific percentage or select a preset option as shown on this table. In general, as the input percentage increases, the tension stiffening effect will be reduced. Cracking will occur at earlier times and at lower levels, and load history deflections will increase. Typically, lower percentages would be appropriate for a typical intermediate floor in a multi-story structure. Larger percentages would be more appropriate for other conditions such as podium slabs, transfer plates, and basement slabs. Now for this particular model, we're going to go ahead and enter the external shrinkage restraint as moderate. Now after we enter the general parameters, we're going to take a look at the variables in the bottom half of this dialog. Now the variables in this area would be code specific, so you do need to coordinate them with the creep or shrinkage model that you selected. Again, this video is focusing on the ACI 209.2R08 code, and we're going to go ahead and focus on the variables as such. Now the ACI 209.2R will calculate the creep 
strain based on the 24-day mean concrete elastic modulus. Since RAM concept assumes that the elastic modulus is a 28-day mean modulus as a result, no adjustment for the elastic modulus is required at early ages. Now for this particular model, we're gonna go ahead and enter our basic creep coefficient, our basic shrinkage strain, the relative humidity, the exposure, and the cement type. Once we are done entering all this information, let's go ahead and click OK. Now at this point, we have entered our load history calculation options and we're ready to perform the next step in our workflow, which is calculating our load history deflections. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.